Today we are going to recreate these light trail effects from this music video by Max Cooper, directed by the incredibly talented Kevin McLaughlin. This tutorial relies and will focus heavily on expressions, and we will be adding and changing our code step by step in ascending levels of difficulty. For this tutorial I'll be using a screenshot from the music video itself in order to imitate the actual effect as much as possible, but any dark shot with bright lights will work. For this specific example, I'm going to move the anchor point to the center of this red stoplight, as I want that to be the rotation axis. Rename this layer Main and add a curves effect to increase the contrast. Change the blending mode to Screen, and although it might not be strictly necessary, add a Luma Key effect to further get rid of the background. Click the 3D layer checkbox. Next, add a Null object and a camera. Rename the Null Controls, add a slider to it, and rename the slider ZDist. Duplicate your main layer and rename the duplicate Copy. Under Position, Alt-click the stopwatch to open up the expression controls. We're going to write an expression to control the Z-axis property. This statement simply means Z will take the value from the slider. Remember the structure of this expression, as we'll be seeing a lot more of it in this tutorial. Because the position property has three dimensions, as this layer is in 3D, its output must be a 3 by one array, X, Y, Z. Writing position 0 will return the X dimension, position 1 the Y dimension, and position 2 the Z dimension. Our final output must therefore be of the form position 0, position 1, z times index minus 3. Index refers to the current layer number in this comp, and I am subtracting 3 from it because as this is the first copy, I only want it displaced by one set of our z distance parameter. Now we can duplicate our copy layer lots of times and adjust the distance between each layer using our slider. Let's now add an expression for the z rotation. Delete all copies except one. Add a new slider to our null and rename it zrot. Enable expressions under the zrotation property in the copy layer. Create a zrot variable that will take the value from the zrot slider. Our output is simply index minus 3 times zrot. Duplicating our copy layer and adjusting the zrotation slider creates a spiral. In some shots of the music video, you can see that the copies begin to rotate at a certain point and then stop rotating after a certain point. Let's change our expression to accommodate this feature. Add two more sliders to our null and rename them as zrot start and zrot end. I'll change the values to 5 and 10 respectively for the time being. Under our zrotation expression in our copy layer, delete the output expression and copy paste the zrot statement twice. Rename these to create two variables zrot start and zrot end. I'm also going to create an additional variable called lanum, which will give us the actual position of this layer within the array. When I say position of the layer, I mean its order in the sequence. Our output expression will be an if-else statement. If this layer's position is smaller or equal to zrot start, then the rotation will be set to zero. If this layer is larger than zrot start but smaller than zrot end, then this layer will rotate. The expression is the zrot variable multiplied by the layer's position offset by the zrot start value. Lastly, if the layer's position is larger than zrot end, then the rotation will remain fixed at zrot times zrot end minus zrot start. By duplicating our copy layer, we can now control when our spiral begins and ends using the sliders. Observing the music video more closely, it seems that each subsequent layer starts to rotate more and more until reaching a constant rotation factor. Let's change our code again to add a gradual start and end to our spiral. When the layer's position reaches our zrot start, I want the rotation factor for every subsequent layer to be incremented by 1 until it reaches zrot. It will look like this. Z rot of layer x will be 1, Z rot of layer x plus 1 will be 3, Z rot of layer x plus 2 will be 6, and so on and so forth until the increment reaches the Z rot factor. The equation of the nth triangular number is n squared plus n divided by 2, which we will be using in our expression. This is a full if else statement, which I'll explain briefly. Before Z rot start, the rotation will remain 0. If the layer is between Z rot start and Z rot start plus Z rot, then the rotation will slowly increase according to the triangular number equation with the lanum variable offset by Z rot start. Between Z rot start plus Z rot and Z rot end, the rotation will increase constantly, so that's Z rot times lanum offset by Z rot start and Z rot, and we must add back the triangular number of Z rot to account for the gradual increase in the previous layers. Then between Z rot end and Z rot end plus Z rot, we will copy the same expression as before but also subtract the triangular number of lanum minus z rot end as we want the rotation factor to decrease gradually. Finally, beyond z rot end plus z rot, the rotation remains fixed as before. Whew. 
our spiral now starts and ends more gradually and looks smoother. Before we continue with the animation of all these properties, I just want to show the initial code I wrote for this project. Now I know what you're going to say. These two expressions produce the same effect, but the second code calculates everything it needs independently and from scratch, whereas the first code relies on looking for values in previous layers. For example, to calculate the Z rotation, it looks for the Z rotation value of the layer above it and adds the Z rotation factor. This is an easy expression to understand and to write, but it is much less efficient. If I change some values and run the two sequences, the first expression is much slower than the second one. Remember this when writing your own code. We can now animate our camera and sliders. I'm going to animate the camera's position to start from inside the spiral and move back to its initial position. I'll also keyframe the Z distance and the Z rotation so the distance between layers and rotation factor decrease as the camera moves. I've added some additional slider controls. I have one slider that controls the opacity of the layers using the following simple expression, which means I can adjust to how many layers are visible. As the Z distance decreases, I can decrease the number of layers. These two sliders control the contrast of the layers. I replace the curves effect with lumetri and keyframe several properties so that the layers lose their contrast and return to normal. Finally, for the main top layer, I keyframed both the lumetri effect and the luma key to turn off at the last frame of the animation. We now have this cool, trippy light trail animation, which is fully controllable and customizable. To round off this tutorial, I will explain how we can use a video for this effect. I have this clip of some shaky fairy lights that are out of focus. I will freeze frame on the first frame and duplicate this layer. Enable expressions under the time remap property of the duplicate and write index minus one times one divided by 25. This will shift the freeze frame by one frame for each layer we duplicate. And now you can add the sliders and expressions from a previous example. Subscribe for more tutorials and creative experiments, or you can follow me on Instagram to see them there as well. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.